Research shows that this practice has measurable effects on practitioners. Regular whirling practice increases feelings of connection, reduces anxiety and depression, and enhances overall psychological well-being. But these are just the side. Effects. The real purpose is spiritual transformation. The goal is to experience yourself as something far greater than your individual ego. This is why the whirling ceremony is called SEMA, which means listening. You are not just spinning your body. You are listening with your entire being to the cosmic music that runs underneath all existence. You are tuning your personal frequency to match the frequency of the universe itself. When this alignment happens, the boundaries between self and cosmos dissolve. But here is what most people miss about Rumi's system. The whirling is not an escape from the world. It is a return to the world with transformed awareness. After the spinning stops, after the ego dissolution is complete, you come back to ordinary consciousness. But now you know something you did not know before. You have experienced yourself as part of the cosmic dance. You can never again believe that you are truly separate from the rest of existence. This is why Rumi called his followers a learning community. The whirling practice is not meant to be done alone. It creates bonds between practitioners that go deeper than ordinary friendship. When you have shared the experience of ego dissolution, when you have witnessed each other spinning into spiritual transformation, you recognize something in other people that transcends personality and individual differences. The academic research emphasizes that Rumi's poetry and his whirling practice are inseparable. The dance does not just accompany the poetry. The dance is the poetry expressed through movement instead of words. Every spin embodies a verse. Every gesture manifests a spiritual truth. Your body becomes the living manuscript of Rumi's teachings. Modern people often try to understand Rumi's poetry intellectually through reading and analysis. But Rumi did not design his teachings for intellectual understanding alone. He designed them for whole being transformation. The whirling practice takes his insights out of your head and into your body, out of concept and into direct experience. This is why tourist performances of whirling dervishes, while beautiful to watch, miss the deeper point. The spinning is not entertainment. It is spiritual technology. It is a precise method for accessing states of consciousness that can fundamentally change your relationship with existence itself. When reduced to performance, it becomes hollow spectacle instead of transformative practice. But you do not need to become a formal dervish to benefit from Rumi's insights. The principle behind the whirling can be applied to any repetitive practice that quiets the ego and opens awareness to something larger. The key is understanding that spiritual transformation requires your whole being, not just your thoughts and beliefs. Rumi's revolution was recognizing that the body is not an obstacle to spiritual development. The body is the vehicle for spiritual development. Your physical form is not separate from your consciousness. It is the instrument through which consciousness knows itself. When you align your bodily movements with cosmic principles, you create optimal conditions for transcendent experience. The whirling dervishes prove that it is possible to choreograph your own spiritual awakening. You do not have to wait for grace to strike randomly. You do not have to hope that enlightenment will eventually find you. You can actively participate in your own transformation by aligning your personal practice with the deeper patterns that govern all existence. 800 years after Rumi's death, scientists are beginning to understand the mechanisms behind Practices that Sufi mystics have used successfully for centuries. The whirling dance works because it disrupts the normal patterns of self-referential thinking that keep the ego in control. It creates space for awareness to expand beyond the usual boundaries of individual identity. When you watch the whirling, dervishes, you are seeing human beings voluntarily dissolving the very sense of self that most people spend their lives trying to strengthen and protect. 
they are showing you that what you think of as your solid, permanent identity is actually fluid and transformable. They are demonstrating that there is something in you that is larger than your ego, something that connects you to the cosmic forces that move the stars. Rumi's whirling revolution continues today because the human need for ego dissolution and spiritual rebirth is as strong now as it was eight centuries ago. We still get trapped in limited identities. We still suffer from the illusion of separation. We still need practices that can reconnect us to the larger reality of which we are part. The dance that dissolves your ego is waiting for anyone brave enough to spin. The cosmic patterns that Rumi embedded in every movement are still active, still transformational, still capable of showing you who you really are beneath the mask of personality. All you need is the willingness to let your body teach your mind what 800 years of dervishes have already discovered. When you move in harmony with the universe, the universe moves through you. The whirling dervishes spin exactly like planets orbiting the sun. Their dance mirrors the cosmic movements of the universe itself. But this is not coincidence. Rumi designed it this way on purpose. He understood that to dissolve your ego, your body must move in harmony with the same forces that move the stars. Recent academic research has revealed the genius hidden in every spin. When you watch a whirling dervish, you are witnessing something extraordinary. You are seeing a human being deliberately choreograph their own spiritual transformation. This is not just dance. This is not just prayer. This is a precisely designed technology for ego dissolution that has been proven effective for over 800 years. And modern researchers have finally figured out exactly how it works. I did not invent whirling randomly. According to academic research from the University of Nebraska, each step of the whirling dervish dance corresponds to specific themes found in Rumi's poetry. The dance literally embodies four distinct stages, separation from unity, ascension, annihilation, and return to unity. Your body becomes the instrument through which your ego dies and your soul is reborn. But here is what makes... Rumi's system revolutionary. He understood that spiritual transformation is not just a mental process. It requires your entire being. Your body, your breath, your movement, your awareness must all align with cosmic principles. The dervishes spin counterclockwise around their own heart, embracing all humanity with love. This is not arbitrary choreography. This mirrors the rotation of planets the movement of galaxies, the fundamental patterns that govern all existence. The academic research reveals something profound. Rumi's dance follows what scholars call the Neoplatonic theory of emanation. This is the idea that all existence flows from a single divine source and must eventually return to that source. The whirling dance physically enacts this cosmic cycle. As you spin, you are not just moving your body. You are aligning yourself with the fundamental structure of reality itself. Let me explain how this works. The whirling ceremony, known as Sima, begins with the dervish standing still. This represents your original state of unity with the divine, before you became aware of yourself as a separate being. Then begins the first stage, separation from unity. The dervish starts to move, begins to spin. This spinning represents the soul's journey away from its divine source into the world of all. Individual existence, where the ego forms and takes control of your identity. But separation is not the end of the story. It is the beginning of the real journey. The second stage is ascension. As the dervish spins faster and more rhythmically, they enter a state where the physical world begins to fade and spiritual awareness begins to dominate. The repetitive motion, the music, the focused intention work together to quiet the normal chatter of the ego and open space for something deeper to emerge. The third stage is the most crucial, annihilation. This is what Sufis call fana, the complete dissolution of the individual self. 
The dervish spins so continuously, so completely, that the sense of being a separate person begins to disappear entirely. There is no longer a spinner and a spinning. There is only the spinning itself. The ego, which normally controls your thoughts and reactions, cannot maintain its grip when faced with this level of physical and spiritual intensity. Academic research shows that this is not just metaphorical. The repetitive spinning, combined with controlled breathing and focused intention, actually alters brain chemistry and consciousness. The default mode network, which is responsible for self-referential thinking and ego maintenance, becomes quiet. Meanwhile, areas of the brain associated with transcendent experience and feelings of unity become highly active. The fourth and final stage is return to unity. After the spinning stops, the dervish experiences themselves as having returned to their divine source, but now with the wisdom gained from the journey. They have died to their ego and been reborn as something larger. They know themselves not as isolated individuals, but as expressions of the same cosmic force that moves the planets and stars. Rumi understood something that modern neuroscience is only now discovering. Consciousness is not fixed. The ego, which feels so solid and permanent, is actually just a pattern of brain activity that can be disrupted and reconfigured. The whirling dance is a technology for accessing states of consciousness that are normally unavailable to ordinary awareness. Why spinning specifically? Why not some other form of movement? Here is where Rumi's genius becomes clear. Spinning is the fundamental motion of the cosmos. Atoms spin. Planets spin. Galaxies spin. When you spin your body in the same pattern, you are harmonizing your personal energy with the energy that moves the entire universe. You become a microcosm reflecting the macrocosm. The dervishes traditionally wear white robes that flare out during the spinning. These represent burial shrouds, symbolizing the death of the ego. The tall felt hat represents the tombstone of the ego. Even the clothing is designed to reinforce the psychological and spiritual message. You are dying to who you thought you, or so that you can be born into who you really are. The music that accompanies the whirling is equally intentional. It begins with praise for the Prophet Muhammad, then moves into repetitive sacred phrases and melodies designed to induce trance states. Rumi himself said that the house of love was made completely of music, and that music was the sound of the doors of paradise opening. The sound frequencies, combined with the spinning motion, create optimal conditions for ego dissolution. 